from the new recording lair located deep beneath the Wine and Spirit Store in Ephrata, Pennsylvania. You're listening to the Masonic Light Podcast. Studio 665 presents Masonic Light Podcast. This show is recorded by Masons, for Masons, and is for entertainment purposes only. And please, no wagering. This podcast is not endorsed by any Grand Lodge, and the ridiculous ramblings of the hosts are their own. And now, here's your host. Hey, everybody. Hey. Episode 65 of Masonic Lake Podcast. Six, Hi, everybody. 65. 65. 65. 65. So, uh, Larry. Larry, Very exciting. So episode 65, Larry, are you awake? <laughs> I think that's a yes. He looked like he just got hit in the head. <laughs> so everybody, we, we this is the busiest time of the year masonically. It's the most wonderful It's the most time. masonic time of the year. Wow, it's crazy. Um, so let's just go around the room. Today's kind of a weird episode because yesterday we were supposed to be recording <laughs> in Reading, at the Valley of Reading. Um... Larry was not going to be there anyway. Um, I had a personal emergency. My dog <clears throat> died in my living room, and that was kind of crazy and stressful. And uh, so we just opted not to go up yesterday. So now we're in studio recording, and we're going to try and do the holiday happenings next week. So, Jason, what have you been up to the past couple weeks? <coughs> Coughing and... Yeah, I've oh, got a cough that I can't kick. But uh, masonically, you know, towards the end of the, the month... I know it's the beginning of December, but the the end of November was relatively quiet. We had, I can't even think. Did we have Ubar? Mm-hmm. We had Grotto. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. That's right. We took no. uh, took November off. Yeah, and you know we didn't have any extra meetings the end of the month and forty. I gotta so say, uh, even though I'm the one that kind of like stirred that up, our Tall Cedars meeting in November was like seventeen people. That's including spouses. Yeah. It, Tall Cedars is like, I mean, no, any November meeting is the lowest attended meeting, especially in Pennsylvania when it falls around deer season and Thanksgiving, because people only have, and family's still in town. It's just tough. You're just competing with a lot. You're just, you just lack commitment, Pete. That's all it is. It's, 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 I, it's I go, I, I go. My attendance Those of is us stellar. Those were there weren't lacking in. <laughs> no, right? Yeah. Yeah. right. We were there. We were there. Yeah. Oh, I know what I did do. Yeah, no, I did uh, the Black Friday version of Goose and Gridiron. So that was nice. And yep. that was at the movable, uh, I can't even say it, movable feasts, which uh, I understand was for the last time at that location. That's, I mean, a handful of committee meetings, but that was probably the only fellowship thing that I've done. And then obviously Thanksgiving. So, oh, we had uh, Allied Masonic Degrees uh, just a couple days ago. And that's it. Brother Jack. Uh, mine's about the same. I, I also went to that Friday dinner uh for the goosey gridiron and i was also at your amd meeting that's about it i've been missing it oddly enough i usually whine about having too much masonry on my calendar but it does get quiet in the in november and december a little bit we at grotto we decided we were going to push through july and august and have meetings in july and august and then take november december because our meetings are scheduled at the end of each month, and that's always the holiday, and that was a that was problematic. But um, I missed it in November. Uh, yeah. So that's just me. Well, but, maybe on this episode or one of the next current upcoming episodes, we can discuss your year coming up as monarch of Ubar Grotto. Ooh, we could uh, encourage people to join and become monarchs or uh, become his, prophets of the enchanted realm. And his schedule's all done. It's done. It's, I'm so ready for this. I'm I. So I'm we're going to skip away. We'll go away from the, the monarch elect, and let's go to the venerable prophet elect of Ubar Grotto, our current secretary of Ubar Grotto, Jay Laser. Current outgoing secretary of Ubar Grotto. And, and by the way, that's pronounced laser. Yeah, you guys can't see the finger quotes around laser. <laughs> Jay, have you done anything Masonically recently? Well, I was at your uh, poorly attended <laughs> Tall Cedar meeting. <laughs> And I did. I did make the uh, <coughs> Black Friday at uh, Movable Feast. Also, uh, DNS had uh, for guys whose wives were out 
cavorting through all the stores and places, uh, a couple of cigars over there that day. And then, uh, let's see, last uh, Thursday was another Goose and Gridiron at uh, Move, or no, Square Mile Public Square House. Square Mile, yeah. In, uh, they have Golf. good food. They do have good food. Kelly knows how to serve out there. Yeah. Nice Kelly, job. Kelly definitely knows how to serve. She uh, does. Uh, definitely, we're sacrificing some efficiency from the movable feast because they were able to serve a lot of people pretty quickly. But the food's really good over the new place, but like it just wanders out one plate at a time. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite the same. Not quite the same. It, it, that's true, but people that get there early order early. And and so, you know, people dribble in. We don't all get there at 9 right. o'clock. And so it, it works. It and works. it's very, yeah. I mean, it's a very comfortable and place. The food's beautiful place. Troy, Troy um, food Constable Troy had uh, a big breakfast, and he gave me what was left of his pancakes. No, oh, he didn't I, eat any of his pancakes. I ate the pancakes, Huge. and then I handed them to uh, what was left to Scott Hoover. And he ate them, or finished them. Yes. Yeah. Hey, a, spe- a special guest. Wait, Scott Hoover made it. Were you breakfast. kidnapped by gypsies yes, or hippies or oh. <laughs> life crisis, bro? <laughs> Good to see you. Man. Hey, uh, Jack, talk to the microphone. Tell everybody who's here. Sorry, this is uh, Keith Robertson. Keith is a, a member of our lodge. Um, I won't call you a newbie because you're not really a newbie, but um, a youngster. I in thought the it was lodge. Dave Grohl. I was, I was pretty honest. <laughs> <laughs> but don't sit on the monkey. Um, that's a whole other thing. Oh God, I missed the monkey. <laughs> That that painting is entitled "Every Monkey Deserves a Fez." Did you do that too? No, no, that's from a professional artist. Oh, an employee that who makes his money from art. We just don't want to leave it on the floor right there because that's where the flood happens. Oh, so we'll put that up before we leave. Hey, Larry, have you done anything masonically or otherwise? Anything. Carol, Carol was out of town, so you probably just slept. <laughs> he came to coffee. Yeah, came to coffee at Mean Cup. Saturday, the last movable feast in the public square, right? public house. Yeah, that was it. All right. Well, I had Tall Cedars meeting, uh, which was very riveting. Um, and I also had a uh, council meeting, a Goodwin Council number 19, which we had to cut short because my favorite building in all of Freemasonry, the Lancaster Masonic Center, um, <laughs> their heater decided to stop working. <laughs> In the winter, the air conditioner decided to stop working in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, whatever. Anyway. What can you do, right? I oh. just, it, it's like watching, I have, it's like I have friends that are in an abusive relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and they can't get out of it. That building abuses them, and then they just keep making excuses for that ba- building's poor behavior. Well, you know, he can't help it. He's old, and he doesn't know better. <laughs> No, you got to leave that man. You got to leave that building. So. Punch him in the throat and get out. That's all. Oh, uh, I do no, want to say. No, nobody's leaving that building. I, no, I, we're not allowed. I got news for you. That, that's oh, not yeah. happening. That was forbidden. I do want to mention something, and we both forgot about. Before the uh, Tall Cedars meeting that you had, that only had a, what, 16 or 17 attendants. We went and went to uh, the York Country Club and had a Tall Cedars ball, which was the Grand Tall Ball. That was the most spectacular damn thing I yeah, think I had Yeah, big shout to out to York Forest. And Freemasonry. That was incredible. So apparently, first of all, apparently York has a country club. <laughs> <laughs> totally shocked. Apparently there is a good part of York. I was not aware. Oh, there's lots of good York. So there's this like little kind of like compound on the south end of the city where all the people with money are like walled in. It's just before you get over the mountain. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and then it becomes Red Lion and it's a whole different thing. Oh. But it was amazing. And uh, like I, you know, I don't, I'm not a member of a country club, but I'm familiar. So I'm like, I'll be right back. I have to go to the bathroom. So I went downstairs to the club room and I'm like, ooh, they have my cologne. Ooh, they have my hair gel. Ooh, they have this. So I was like gone for 20 minutes. And I came back with my hair totally different. And I was like, my wife's like, where are you been? Like, I was pampering myself. They even had like the um, the combs and the blue like Listerine, the Barbasol. Yeah. It was so amazing. So anyway, good food, good entertainment. They had a 20... 20... 27-piece orchestra. Wow. Big band. And four singers, three ladies and a man. They were... 
Fantastic. It was, like I said, in all my years in Freemasonry, this was probably one of the best functions I have ever wow. been to. So, yeah, everybody, please, we'll talk about it next year. We're going to do the same thing. You're all invited because the Tall Cedar meetings are open. They're so open that that band has groupies, like people that are swing dance clubs. Yeah, yeah. And, like, there was no moshing, but there were people that were out there um, doing, like, professional-level swing dancing. And that really got everybody into it. Because music was like the 40s. Because mm-hmm. so. nobody yeah. here remembers the 40s except Larry. That's right. He was in his 40s. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Let's take a but quick... What, I got, I got, I got one, one more thing. Oh, and God. It, it, well, it's only slightly Masonic. I forgot to mention that obviously we all celebrated Thanksgiving. In our house, Tiny City Row Home, we had taken on two international students from FNM, Franklin Marshall College, that had nowhere to go because they weren't going to fly home to Turkey or China. Uh, but also... You made somebody from Turkey eat turkey. <laughs> yeah, we did. Is that... Uh, it? That's cannibalism. It's can- uh, yes. I, he didn't... He didn't <laughs> beat you. <laughs> he, didn't seem to, he didn't seem to think that that was... Uh, Not that that was what, And I found out that he had just turned 21, so I offered him a drink and we had a drink together, so I got my bottle of vodka out of the freezer, and then he decided to not have another drink with me after that, because... Because you finished it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he just wasn't, he wasn't ready to drink vodka. However, the reason I bring it up is that we also had two brothers uh, from my lodge that had nowhere to go, so last minute we reached out to them and we were able to, to feed them Thanksgiving. Well, that's so, very Masonic of you, Jason. Yeah, right? So I thought so, too, and they had, they had a blast. So, so awesome. we'll end on a nice note instead of my snarky joke high note. Okay. On the list of things to do <laughs> is Larry peeing and also other things. <laughs> All right. Potty break. Potty break. We'll come back and we'll talk to Brother Jay Laser. Hey there, listeners. This is Pete, and I wanted to tell you about MasonicScarves.com. Masonic Scarves offers full-color knitted soccer-style scarves, perfect for you to wear to lodge, out casually, or even to display in your home. I currently have in our lineup pretty much every Masonic body from Blue Lodge, York Rite, Scottish Rite, Grotto, Shrine. If you think about it, I probably have it. Are you a turtle? Well, you bet your sweet ass I have a scarf for that. So you can easily order online with a credit card, and I'll generally have your scarf in the mail the next business day. Do you need an easy fundraiser for your lodge or organization? I can have a custom scarf design delivered to you in about four weeks as long as you order a minimum of 50 pieces. I can help you with the artwork, and you'll have an original item that you can sell or hand out as a gift for visitors or past masters. Visit MasonicScarves.com or drop me an email at info at MasonicScarves, and I'll be glad to help you. Why choose George J. Grove and Sons for your next home improvement project? At George J. Grove and Sons, we've built our reputation on quality and trust for more than 50 years. For planning to materials to installation, George J. Grove promises a home improvement experience second to none. Whether your goal is reducing energy costs, decreasing maintenance, updating curb appeal, or simply increasing the value of your home, the George J. Grove team will recommend and provide solutions that stand the test of time. Call 717-393-0859 for an estimate or visit us at georgejgrove.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Masonic Lake Podcast. And our special guest, Brother J. Air quotes. Laser. Laser. We Jay, you, Jay's Jay. our special guest because we had an emergency meeting, and he's the first one that showed up, so he got the chair with the microphone. <laughs> has anybody noticed his hat? He has a Masonic Light podcast hat. That, yes, sir, he does. And a pin. And a pin. He is so on the team. We love he, Jay. He makes the super fan dressed. The team. Right. So, Jay, well, we're going to interview you. Um, how, <laughs> In case you didn't know. <laughs> so, Jay, how long? Lo- you're a member of Lodge 665. I am. Which is right here. Correct. But you're from Lannisville, so how did you become a member of this lodge? Well, that goes back a few years when we still had a DMLA chapter here. And I was, uh, or I'm still, senior DMLA. And uh, Eddie Carvel, who is also a senior DMLA, belongs to Hal down in Honeybrook. said, hey, why don't you come over and help out? So I did. And uh, Charlie Steffi. Jack will remember that name. Charlie Is that the Steffi uh, that this lodge, or the, this uh, whole no, floor's name? Oh, okay. No, no, it is not. 
and uh, Ducky Laura, who's uh, both those uh, brothers have passed, but um, they invited me over and they, they called me profane and, and all kind of other <laughs> odd names because at that time I was still not uh, in a lodge anywhere. So they, they kind of convinced me that I probably should uh, make a decision and join a lodge. So here I am in effort of 665. Very nice. And so you said you're a senior DMLA, so you were yes. involved with the Masons, but you didn't join, take the big step yet as correct. an adult. Okay. That's correct. Yes. Well, what happened? So Navy, what got in your way? Oh, gosh. Well, yeah, graduated high school, a little bit of college, United States Navy, uh, work, marriage, uh, the whole bunch of stuff going on in there. So, yeah. Yeah. A lot of things. Life got in the road. I'm surprised at how many DMLAs we let get away from us. Uh, I don't know of any DMLAs that were in the effort of chapter that became I Masons. Can, I can name one, Ashley Steffi. And he he would have been before I was involved because yeah. he's just that age group ahead of the kids that were in yeah. when I was here. Yes, and he and he's yes. a um, he's a trustee in our lodge yeah. now. Yeah. But I can't. I mean, I know a, a bunch of guys that had been DMLAs. Mm -hmm. That so you maybe know, that's for recruiting. Yeah. We should go through the re the books and hunt these guys down like predator. You know, hunt them down. I don't think we should let them get away in the first place. I think we I should think hit the DMLA mess. chapters that are still in existence of those few that are left. One, I think, only. In Lancaster County, and that's Elizabeth. Like the second that somebody turns eighteen, be at the oh, door of the petition. Be at their door. Be at their yeah. Be well. Become DMLA dads. Become advisors to chapters. Don't let them get away. Yeah, I think it's a big miss. So Jay, you um, the past couple of years you've been heavily involved in Ubar Grotto. Oh, okay. You've been the secretary. I have three years. Yeah, so Finally. I mean that's heavily involved, and you do a lot of traveling. That's the power behind the throne, which is fun. So if you had, we had to give a, a sales pitch to the people that aren't in Grotto. What would uh, what that would are you not? Yeah, that are not. What, what would you? What would you say to someone who is? I don't know. Try and talk somebody into joining the Enchanted Realm. What someone, you, someone who knows nothing about it. Someone who's on the fence. Here's one right here. There's one in the room. There's one right here. If 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 you enjoy going to lodge, hey, microphone it, over here. Oh, buddy. okay. Yeah, I guess I can. I, yeah. Well. <laughs> I'm having a conversation. Yeah, I, I know it's uh, different. Use here. Jack's microphone. Okay. <laughs> All right. If if you enjoy the fellowship of the Blue Lodge, but you don't like the uh, rigidness here, and it's only I think because of Pennsylvania. If you talk to brothers around the country, um, Grotto will exceed all of your dreams. <laughs> so if you've got a dream, Grotto will exceed it. It's it's a great. Well, you know what? I think you may have hit it. It is a low bar. I'm short. I walk underneath it. So we are yeah. the sandbox of Freemasonry. Yes, That's we, are. we are. It's the playground. And the cat is just left and shaking his paws <laughs> off. <laughs> yes, yes, we are the playground. Yeah, without uh, a doubt. Okay. No, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it, it's, so why did you uh, you jumped in line this year? Um, I did. How come you wanted to get in the officer line? I wanted to get in the officer line three years ago when uh, they came and talked to me and said, why don't you want to be secretary? I said, well, I don't want to be secretary. They said, well, we'd really like you to be secretary. So I took secretary for three years, and I said, you know what? By the time I get to be monarch, I'll be ancient in, in grotto, at least in our grotto. So I'll be Is 70, that like dog years? I'll be 71, 72. I'll turn 72 during my year as uh, monarch, and that's 72. pretty old for, oh, that's old. you know, Jeez, um, for yeah. Ubar Grotto. Do we need to start guys raising money young. for a defibrillator? And... Well, no, but a walker and a wheelchair might be nice at that point. <laughs> the walker of the realm. There you go. You're a white walker. Look at that. I could be. Okay, so uh, Jack. Now we'll go back to Jack. So Jack's going to be monarch of Ubar Grotto. I w well, assuming that I live until December the 15th. Yes, but yes. that's the key time right there. Um, so, yeah, that's our installation. Uh, we've got it all planned. I am I am stunned How many? by the number of people that have signed up to come to the installation dinner. We have 42 oh, right? wow. reserves. I, I need to do that still. Um, Ooh, you have okay. 43. Oh, 43. All right, but, uh, bring your spouse. That's significant. It's open. Lodge 43. Yeah, bring, bring, uh, bring, bring Jess. That's, that's nice. Um, that's good in theory, but it would just be In, in, in <laughs> contrast, I think I had 20. So, so I mean, that's amazing. Um, yeah. I'm just stunned. I think we're at a, a really good place uh, in Grotto right now. We've got a year planned. Um, yeah, that word was planned, which is cool. Um, uh, so I think it's going to be a good time. Um, we've got a lot of fun happening. I've got some extracurricular stuff to do on the schedule. I'm trying to get the 
uh, Kentucky Colonel's unit to to schedule a trip to, to Penn actually Nas- do something to, to schedule a trip I for think, the group. I think that's on the calendar. Penn National Raceway, um, so that we can um, we can take part in the Triple Crown Series. Now, the chances of being there for any one of the Triple Crown races is pretty remote, but we're going to go up. Um, and just experience horse racing and wear funny hats and wear and drink mint juleps and and, and dress up as Kentucky colonels. Let the ladies put on their finery and now, fancy those of you hats. that have never seen Jay Laser in person, Jay Laser is the personification of a Kentucky colonel. And for you I folks was, out I there was. that are not familiar, there is an actual organization of Kentucky colonels. It's an order, right? Uh, and I just got my 2019 dues card. Look at that. So, Jay, what's the what, so I was nominated a couple of years ago. You have to be nominated. This is not a Masonic affiliation. Correct. It it's, is not. It's it's a, no, but it's, it's an it's, honorary thing for the state of Kentucky. But it's it's pretty neat. Like when you read how much money that the people that are in this actually have donated. So to charity. So I would say it's fraternal, but they invite women as well. So ladies are also members. Members They're as, also colonels. as colonels. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, so it's, you, it's a good group. You get nominated, and then they they say yay or nay, and you get a nice patent in the mail from from the governor. Yeah, That's you, very nice. Yep, the actual governor. And there was a governor, like one or two governors ago, that he kind of thought, "Oh, this is silly," and like stopped issuing um, commissions. And uh, you're right; it is silly. It's intended to be <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so very good on you. Yeah. You picked it very up. Very observant. Nice. My father was an actually an admiral in the Navy of the great state of Nebraska. So it's kind of it's kind of like the same thing. Cool. Yeah. I like yeah. that. <laughs> uh, Got a big thing on the wall. It was great. So Jay, the other thing that you're really involved in is um, is scouting. And you were an Eagle Scout. I, w- I am an Eagle Scout. You, oh, I don't want to like yes. Oh yeah. That's yeah. like like a, That's marine, a like once you, you was you were still ever will be. Okay. Yes. So Tell me about when did you see all the, um, I'm, and I don't want to spoil anything for folks, but like the similarities between Freemasonry and <clears throat> Boy Scouts, especially like the Order of the Arrow. Well, I'm a vigil member of the Order of the Arrow, and, and not having been a Mason at that time, there, was, there were things that I thought that I had heard from D. Malay. And when I got into Masons, I'm thinking, wow, I wonder if Erner Goodman, you know, and the guys that were the originators of the Order of the Arrow had Masonic connections. So um, a lot of the, the language, um, the, the breakdown of, of the way the Order of the Arrow Lodge is set up and the officers and, and how they work. Uh, so I was probably, well, I came in uh, 37 years ago. So in my early 80s, when I became a Mason and looked back at some of the things from the Order of the Arrow, yeah. So for our non-scouting members or listeners, can you briefly explain what the Order of the Arrow is? I mean, it's an invite-only body in scouting, correct? It it is an elected uh, body where the youth of each of the uh, Boy Scout troops are elected by their um, and, and it's funny, you're elected by non-members of the Order of the Arrow, where in a Masonic Lodge you have to be elect, or, or you're allowed in because members of that Blue Lodge say, yeah, we'll take you, you do good, we'll come out and we'll check you and your family out and see if you uh, pass muster. But uh, the Order of the Arrow is you're elected by members who are not necessarily members of the Order. Very cool. Oh, 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 Larry's circling the horses. Larry's pointing at buzzards. Uh, Larry has to poop, everybody. Larry wants pickles. Larry has to go to the bathroom, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, hey, we're going to take a quick break. Quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk more to Jay Laser, Jack Harley about Grotto, and what? me about Tall Cedars. Cool. Thank you. At the historic Smithton Inn of Ephrata, Pennsylvania, we're pleased to serve the latest creations from Weathered Vineyard Winery along with spirits from Thistle Finch Distillery in Lancaster, all to be experienced in the tasting room of a beautifully restored 18th century bed and breakfast. Cigars by DNS Cigar are available for your enjoyment in the courtyard. The historic Smithton Inn is convenient to Lancaster County's most interesting attractions. Just minutes from the Ephrata Cloister and the Green Dragon Farmer's Market, 
and a short drive can get you to charming Lidditz, thriving downtown Lancaster, as well as Hershey, Bird in Hand, and Intercourse, or Valley Forge and Gettysburg. Whether you're looking for a romantic getaway or an active vacation full of sightseeing and attractions, the historic Smithton Inn will be a welcoming oasis from everyday life, one that you'll want to visit again and again. Stop in and visit at 900 West Main Street in Ephrata, Pennsylvania, or check out our website at historicsmithtoninn.com, or simply call us at 717-733-6094. Just ask for Past Master Dave. Do it. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, this is uh, degenerating fast. Uh, this is, that's what it's all about. You know, I, I heard a quote. I listened to um, ESPN radio in the car because I am too cheap to pay for series anymore. <laughs> and and the uh, Don Lebetard show, they, they said a quote the other day that I think we should steal. And it said, for the people that listen to our show... When we're good, we're really good. For the people that enjoy our show, when we're bad, we're really good. <laughs> <laughs> like, like when we have a bad show, I think it's actually as fun. Cause I people... think Marilyn Monroe said that in like 56 <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Wow. And I'm good. I remember 56. It didn't work out well, didn't work out well for her. It didn't work out very well for her. But... So, Jack... Um, so we're going to skip off of the scouting thing for now. Yeah, we'll, right, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have an adult show about scouting at some point that we'll actually have planned out. Who will be the hosts? Well, Jay, Jay, Brian Hill. <laughs> Maybe we, Brian Hill will be. Brian we'll Hill get, will oh, be. Brian Hill's an Eagle Scout. We'll get all, e an all Eagle Scout team. Chris Gibson. <clears throat> yeah. Oh my word! Oh, we could do I'm that. Not sure if Chris is an Eagle, but he he's still involved so I, in scouting. I, I believe so. he is. Uh, brings a point though that there are an awful lot of men. Involved in scouting at a high level, who are Masons? John Pfeiffer. John Pfeiffer. Uh, John Pfeiffer is, yeah. comes to mind. There's a yeah. there's there's a lot of them, and in fact, there is a there is a recognition that's given by the state of Pennsylvania uh, by the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania called the Masonic Scouter Award. Is that the Daniel, Daniel Carter, Carter Beard the Daniel Beard Award. Carter yes. Beard Masonic <laughs> Scouter Award is the correct. Masonic Youth Foundation. Um, if and and this goes out to the people that that you know, aren't local to here because most of the lodges around here are pretty familiar with that idea. Um, but if you have someone in your lodge who is committed to and involved deeply in scouting, they may qualify for the Daniel Beard Masonic Scouter Award. Now, this award has, has it, it's, it's presentable anytime, anywhere, at any lodge, but the Grandmaster has has taken it as a thing uh, to present it at our Lodge in the Woods. At a Boy Scout camp. Uh, at a scout camp here in Lebanon County. And if you are interested, or if someone in your lodge might be interested in receiving this award, and it's, it's, a, it's a nice neck jewel that you can wear in your nice. lodge, um, please go on uh, uh, pamasons.org. And uh, just search for the, the Masonic Scouter Award and do the paperwork. It's not easy to do. It does require some background research, and people have to testify that you know you're you are in fact involved. You can't just be the father of some kid who happened to be a scout for a year and a half. Um, but if you're somebody that's really contributed to the scouting uh, organization, um, it is it is very a very nice opportunity to be recognized. And recognized in a public place in a very cool setting. Jack, and, maybe maybe you said it and I wasn't paying attention, but you need to be nominated. You can't go on and apply yourself. That is correct. correct. That is correct. Yeah. You and have to be nominated by someone mason, by in your mason. lodge, by a, by a master mason. The first time that I ever heard of that was right here in this lodge. When I actually received mine, I think there were six or seven of us from this lodge mm -hmm. who were uh, honored to receive that. And that goes back... Oh gosh, that's gotta be. I don't know, ten years. But it might be something so. for like, you know, incoming worshipful masters. Just kind of put a, a message out: who's involved in scouting, mm -hmm. and just just check it out because it might be nice for you to nominate them, and it could be a nice program for you later in the year. Yeah, and if you don't want to come, you know, to to the lodge in the woods, uh, it's yeah. it's a nice opportunity to recognize somebody in your lodge as well. And yeah, I though. think any Masonic body can nominate 
members. We have to be a master mason to make the nomination. Well, correct. But I think uh, Grotto, Tall Cedars. I don't think it has yeah. to be the Blue Lodge itself. I, I believe you're correct. It just has, but you, have you to know, be it goes back to like certain people enjoy fraternal activities, certain don't. And you know, I was a Boy Scout. I was in a, a fraternity in college, and I really enjoy the Masons. There's a lot of men that maybe were in the military, and then they got out of the military, and they really can't find something that they're interested in. And I'd say the, the Masons obviously isn't anything military-like, but the structure of it, having a little bit of structure and camaraderie and, and shared origins— well, I, I never was in a fraternity, you know, when I was younger or in college. Well, I, I, I'm not a college graduate, but in the music industry, I mean, you know, same thing. I mean, that music life, life on the road, you know, the, just being in that industry, it's, that's another really tight-knit group. And this this is similar from the fellowship aspect of it. And, and that's uh, that's actually part of our our difficulty right now that everybody's talking and and this this goes to the pet peeves show one of our upcoming shows might be a pet peeves show preference um well that's one but this whole (laughs) this whole freemasonry is dying thing makes me just want to just choke somebody because um you know there's talk of that after world war ii there was a you know you guys all know um there was the, the huge bubble that came through and and why anybody didn't think that at some point these people would die um, just wasn't thinking well, we're, and, we're and now losing, we're we're losing weight uh, right we're yeah exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> what, we, what we don't want to do is have bariatric <laughs> surgery <laughs> but as a fraternity <laughs> yes that is true and we're stuck so, with these clothes we can't wear so um, so anyway sc- scouting is a, um, a, a wonderful opportunity to, to serve the youth and we we do recognize uh, the people that do that so and then we do that through the Daniel Carter beard award now segue so yeah Jack introduced from the, from the sublime to the ridiculous we have, a, we, have, we have a last minute guest in the room could you introduce them and then we're gonna do a special thing I'll let you handle it from here um, yeah K- K- Keith why don't you um, why don't you jump up maybe we can displace Jay for a moment is that okay Jay do you mind no hang on let's let's uh, take a, literally a two have, second break our audience won't even know ready one right. two three break so we have an actual super secret guest today. We're, we're recording on a Sunday afternoon at the uh, Studio 665 as a sort of a pull together. I just kind of threw out an open invite to come have a cigar with us. And the guys all said, hey, we're we got a Sunday afternoon. Let's 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 get a session down. So, well, by canceling last night, we would have also not been able to release the show in time. So this worked out well. Yeah. So it fills in. So Keith saw that uh, our, our super secret guest is uh, Keith Robertson, who, um, Keith, you were you were raised, what, four years ago? Correct. Yeah. About? November. Um, and um, Keith is has joined us just because he wanted to stop by the lodge and join us for a, a cigar up on the third floor, and um, or in his case, a really skinny white cigar, but that we'll forgive him for that. Poor man's cigar. Um, <laughs> Um, 20 for $8. Yeah. But um, <laughs> so I've been charged by Pete uh, to to sell Keith on the idea of joining an appendant body. An appendant body. Are you a member of any appendant bodies now? No, sir. No. Oh, okay. So um, he has extra money to spend. So we're going to ask we a few more. already co- sucked it out. So let, let's, let, let's <laughs> ask a few more like nonpartisan questions. Um, are you a married man? No, no, happily good, divorced. Good, good for you. He's got money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you must know different divorce people than I know. Let's see. Um, what is your work schedule? Do you work Monday through? What do you do for a living? Do you work Sunday nights? Uh, CNA work. No, I work uh, Tuesday through Friday. Okay, that'll work. Um, so Jack will start, but Jack, Jack is the will be the incoming monarch, monarch of right. Ubar Grotto. Right. This next year, I will be the incoming Grand Tall Cedar of Lancaster Forest Number Twenty Seven Grand Tall Cedars, mm-hmm. and we're both going to do our elevator pitch to try and and I win anyway because I'm a I'm a district deputy for Grotto, so I win. <laughs> you, Even if I lose, I win. Way. <laughs> <laughs> so Jack, go ahead. Give your best shot. So um, <laughs> now I'm not going to give anything away here if I say that Keith is not a regular attendee at 
at stated meetings of Effort to Lodge. We, we love having you as a member, but you're somebody who's otherwise busy on a weekday night and can't get out and blah, blah, blah. Is that, a, is that pretty close to true? Yeah. Okay. Um, so when you, when you joined Freemasonry, wh- wh- what were you looking for? Why did you join? Uh, camaraderie. Something to help straighten out my life and, yeah, just learning, you know. Did, yeah, did, just wanted to continue building knowledge and, and okay. not letting, you know, precious time go to waste. Did you did you find that in Blue Lodge in a meeting? Don't don't lie. I found a lot of a lot of tools and instruction actually from you, man, coming <laughs> on Sundays and, and learning about the, the workman tools and how to apply them to my life and you know. Yeah. All right. So I can feel the draft blowing up my skirt, so that's okay. <laughs> so what we've uh, what we've what we've got going on is is something we call Ubar Grotto. Now, the Grotto is an independent body of Freemasonry. Uh, you have to be a Master Mason to join Ubar Grotto. And as you grotto, a verb, um, you, uh, you you have to you have to understand that you're still representing Freemasonry as as a part of what you're doing. But we are a much more laid back group. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, every once in a while, the, the leader of the meeting has to step down and go smack somebody across the head for being, you know, ridiculous or whatever. Sweet. Um, but it's a dinner meeting. Um, it's not inexpensive. Uh, the dues are now 60 bucks. It's $108 total. Uh, it's actually 110 now. It went up, but Unless thanks you, for speaking in. Um, so that's the buy-in, right? The, um, and, and what that does is it's, it's 60 of it is dues and 50 of it is two prepaid, really nice dinners. So if you only came to two dinners, to only two meetings a year, you'd get your money, that, that, that portion of the money back. But the idea is that you're meeting with people from a wide footprint geographically. We've got guys from Lebanon and York County and Harrisburg and, uh, West shore. There's a, a couple guys from Maryland. I think that come up, there's guys from, um, Chester County that come up. So it's a lot of new guys that you wouldn't meet if you just, if the only thing you did was come in here. Mm-hmm. And that's really what all the dependent bodies are about is meeting a, a, a much broader breaking out of your normal sphere. Exactly. Exactly. So it's um, a long elevator. Oh, is this the elevator speech? Yeah, he said elevator. It's like oh. a wonka vader going every oh, direction. Is, I'm sorry, I'm going sideways. So, <laughs> two minutes? All right. All right. 23 second speech. Here it is. Are you looking to have some fun in your Masonic career? Of course. Yeah. Can you get out on a, on a Sunday night? Every Sunday. Every Sunday, it's not a problem because you don't work Monday, right? Right. Oh. Would you be interested in hearing more about Grotto? Absolutely. We should probably talk about that. Let's go get a drink. <laughs> Sounds good. Done. Yeah, Drop this, the mic. This is going to be a tougher sell. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a slightly tougher <laughs> sell. Before, before Pete starts, why, why don't you, you, while we're talking about Grotto, why don't you talk about the most exciting part of Grotto in 2019? That would be me. Yeah, uh, exactly. No, I'm, no. <laughs> Tell us about yourself, Jack. <laughs> no, we're, um, no, the... This is this is really hard to do. Um, we have a great we have a great calendar planned. Um, we have presenters uh, at every meeting planned. Twenty minutes, maybe thirty minutes, if if everybody's still excited. Um, if we don't like the speaker, we just chuck them out the window. Um, but it's um, but it's a it's a nice meal. It's a good time. People are relaxed. It's laid back. Um, we have we also have some extracurricular activities planned. We're we're going to go up to Penn National for a day at the races. We're going to go, and you can wear your Marx Brothers fake mustache if you want. Um, we're going to a uh, murder mystery. We're going to do one of those dinners. Uh, we've got some other stuff that we're going to do. You guys got um, the boobs again? Uh, that looks like, it, yeah, if I, can, if I can get it locked in. Um, it's expensive, awesome. though. Holy cow. Yeah. It was fun, though. Yeah. Yes. And, when and this um, is this is we're, we're still a rated PG show, but it is actually pronounced boobies. Boobies, yes, it is. <laughs> boobies Brewery, yeah, B U B E. Boobies. Yeah. And if you were interested in joining in 2019, what would be a good time to do that, and why? Uh, it would be an excellent time to join in March, because March is the Supreme Council of Grottos of the United States uh, are having a, an incentive for March. It's. Uh, what are they National calling it? Grotto National Day. Grotto Day. 
Um, well, and our day. meeting is actually the day after National Grotto Day, but that's okay. We'll just backdate everything. Well, and, um, and but I'll, there are some there are some motivations. And I would say because normally we we will allow men to get go in. We could actually maybe allow you to come in in January. Be careful because I, I communicated with SC Grotto. Oh. And, uh, but you, you would get to, your full you ceremony. You need to be initiated that day. Oh, okay. well, we'll, we'll comp- comply with the rules. Correct. However, really, you may come as a guest no to way. a grotto yeah, me, meeting. Me. You just can't be a part of the voting and the balloting and all of that mm. kind of stuff. So, um, but you're welcome to come as a guest. Uh, we will be meeting in January. We meet in Harris or in uh, Elizabethtown at Funk's Brewery. Okay. Uh, on Sunday evening, we start gathering around five o'clock. We have dinner at six. Meeting starts at seven. It's a great time. It's just a really casual, laid back. It's a fun time. Sweet. All Check right. So here's my 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 big sell on uh, Tall Cedars. How old are you? <laughs> Too old. No, you're not old enough. Thirty-two. I win. Okay. Um, do you, do you like do you like hard candy? <laughs> <laughs> like Montrose? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, so no, I'm I'm coming in as the uh, as the Grand Tall Cedar, and, and Tall Cedars is probably the one of the smallest dependent bodies, and it, it'll be a little bit of a hard sell for you, but for for I'm also selling to the audience, because I think what what Tall Cedars is at least in Lancaster County is more of a dinner club. It's just a nice place where once a month you can go out to dinner with your significant other. There is a little bit of Masonic structure. But it's just a nice dinner, and when you become friends with everybody, it's just you get to have dinner with your friends once a month. Um, dues are thirty-five dollars. That's mm. it. Oh. you get a really cool pyramid to wear on your head. Oh, Probably yeah. the most underrated hat in all of Freemasonry. Underrated. Grotto, you get a fez with when a tassel. You, you pay for that fez. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So we'll give you a pyramid. So that that's um, it used to belong to some dead tall cedar somewhere. So we meet at uh, usually four seasons. We do some exciting things like a sub sale. Uh, we do that. <laughs> wow! Wow! It's a um, party. We're gonna have a grand tall ball again this year with a. You heard how excited Larry was about Can this you big have a, band. A death metal sub sale. Can you do that? Is that a thing? It probably would not. It could be a reggae right. sub sale. That might be better. Anyway, it's it's going to be a tough sell, but I'm just saying, maybe when you get a little older and you get married again. I think Larry is having a stroke. Oh, Larry just wants a cigarette. You or lost being married again, man. That's what I said. You lost me. But it does happen. All right, I'm, I, I am going to throw in a towel, because I, I, cause I just honestly... I do think you're a good fit for Grotto. Hang on, let me let me can I can I, globally speaking, of course. But I, I'll tell you, where everybody in this room is uh, Jack. Jack's right. not in both. Right. Yeah. <laughs> even Jay though is I, waving a white flag. Even though I don't go to Tall Cedars often because it it uh, well almost ever because uh, it, it it does conflict with my schedule. I will be there December. He went once. He went once. No, I've been there a few times, and I'm, we're coming December 11th uh, because, from what I understand, at installation, your significant other hand handles handle hands you handles all, my jewels. It handles your Ooh, jewels. Baby. Yes. Uh, and <laughs> and the incoming junior grand tall does not have a significant other. Oh, are you going to lend him your wife or your I, daughter? I am, and I said that uh, I said you just want her for the night. Uh, <laughs> So yes, I am. I am going as a third wheel because uh, Brother Ken Hudson has taken my wife out to, to handle his jewels. Nice. But what I want to say about Tall Cedars, though, wow. briefly, is that I feel like the social aspect that you think that you're going to get out of Blue Lodge, like the dinners and the time before and after Lodge, I think that Tall Cedars, to me, feels like the fellowship side of Blue Lodge because it still is taken relatively seriously. Your family is allowed to go. So if you enjoy, you know, those moments before and after Lodge, you can ex- you, you can have extended time. Yeah, that. I, I will say it was the first group that really made my wife feel welcome. Right. And that the ladies actually sincerely reached out and made her feel like part of it. Every time that I've gone, it feels like I'm going to like my Lodge's holiday party. Somebody said the other day, it's like... Um, for those of us who, whose parents or grandparents are dead, 
Um, it's like, you know, substitute grandparents, <laughs> you know, or like substitute <laughs> parents. <laughs> it, these people are really nice and they're not, they're not grotto crazy because they, they, their spouses are there and they're a little more old school Pennsylvania Masons that keep everything within due bounds. However, if you just get alone with them in a hospitality room somewhere, They've got some good stories. I mean, there, there's, you know, there's still, the other night, there's occasional World War II vet, Korea vets, Vietnam vets. Um, I mean, listen, when those guys were in their 20s and 30s, they did way crazier stuff than I was ever. They would put my shenanigans to shame. So they just don't talk about it. But if you can kind of like buddy up to them, you'll hear some great stuff. Yes. And, and the other, that is true. The other plug that I have for Cedars, which is one of the reasons I really like it, um, Obviously, almost well, not almost all of the Masonic organizations have a charity that they participate with, and I feel like unless you're a Shriner that's really, really involved in the hospital side of things, or the shepherds who are the, you know, the men that that drive the kids back and forth to the hospitals, Tall Cedars, you know, their their charity that they support. I mean, it's tangible, right? You guys pick a kid that comes in and is a spokesperson, you know, of the year, and I mean, you can, their yeah, charity is muscular dystrophy. Thank by you. By the way, you yeah. can you can feel. You can feel your impact. Yeah, and last year we raised money and we sent, I think, 10 or 11 local kids to um, muscular dystrophy camp. Mm -hmm. So these kids got to go for a week and ride horses and swim, and they have something like like one counselor to a child ratio. It's wow. like, it's crazy. But if you, you know, if, if you're, if you have a child with special needs, you'll understand it's it's a full time job on top of your full time job, so you're also giving these parents a few days where they can actually have a break, but know that their kid is well taken care of. Right. So. So okay, we do give up some on the charity side. Uh, we do have a charity at Grotto, but uh, I, I will give you that. That's that clearly goes down on the uh, Cedars on the Cedar side. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The Obamacare messed up your charity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, no, we're just not going to go there. <laughs> no. The Grotto Charity the is um, dental care for children with special needs. Very sad. You watch the video, I cry every time. Yep. So yep. it's it's very good. It was, just, it, it was a challenge the past couple of years because a lot of things that didn't used to be covered are covered. Right. However, a lot of these dentists are not specially trained to That's care correct. for these kids. So it is still a very important program and they need your help. That is true. So anyway, on that note, we should probably go to break. Considering this show was scheduled about three hours ago, we should uh, maybe we'll hear the news. Maybe we'll hear from mm. Michelle Snyder. No. And and maybe we'll be right back. <laughs> I don't want to. No. 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 All right, and no. I got I to gotta check the file, see if we got something in. in There's uh, two guys here with an unlit um, cigar and cigarette in their mouth. I, think I know, they and I got to leave at three, and I can't, I'm not yep. going to have time. So, right. All right, so let's take it. Let's, <laughs> let, that's all right. Keith's so, Jones in right well, now. I keep thinking it's 1230. We have plenty of time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably plug that clock in. Like a, like a two-way battery. The time miles. is always 1230, 8. It's always low 12 at Yeah. Effort. So let's take a quick break. If we have anything to plug in here, we will. Otherwise, we'll be right back and say our goodbyes. The Red Serpent by Larry Maris. One man's obsession to avenge the death of his wife uncovers a long-hidden ancient blueprint to perfect the world for future generations. Visit www.larrymaris.com. You can purchase this book anywhere except CVS. <laughs> Such a jerk. And we're back. So it's almost time to go home. <laughs> but first, we need to know, Keith, what your decision is. <gasps> Grotto oh, or it's pressure. Sears. It's high do, pressure. Do, 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 I like the do, way that both do, of them do, sound, do. and I feel like they're both work, you know, good organizations. But for where I'm at in my life, probably Grotto would be a, a better place to let you loose got it. and get some camaraderie. Start start. Winner, winner. It's a good start. <laughs> All right, so before we go home, good I guess choice. we need to talk about uh, shameless plugs. And you probably heard some commercials from some of our uh, 
our wonderful advertisers. Uh, we started a Patreon site, www.patreon.com slash Pete Help Me Out. That's not Masonic actually. Light. <laughs> <laughs> slash Pete Help Me Out. Slash Masonic Light. So patreon.com slash Masonic Light. We have a $1 a month, a $5 a month. No, is that right? $1 yeah. a month, $5 a month? One, five, and 13. And while you're talking, I am going to dig in here and I'm going to recognize our... $13. Our contributors. Yeah, Absolutely. So you keep talking. I'll see if I can find So check that, that out. That certainly helps pay the bills, the few bills that we have here. Ephrata is very gracious to have us here, but they're not having us here for free. So we need to, uh, we need to, you know, we need to help offset those costs. Uh, also, there's a lot of upcoming events that we need to talk about. So we have uh, Lamberton Lodge, number 476. That's local. They have a Christmas party coming up December 15th. Uh, they've been great supporters of the show, so it would be wonderful to see you guys go support them. Grand Tall Installation, that would be Pete going in as the uh, Grand Tall Cedar, and that's going to be on December 11th. But also uh, voices and names that you've heard before. We have uh, our friend and brother Ed McGrath going in as the senior, and brother Ken Hudson or K-Dog going in as the junior. Uber Insulation, we've talked about. That's on December 15th. We have uh, brother Jack Harley going in as a presiding officer, and we also have Jay Laser going on uh, going in as the venerable prophet, which would be uh, the fourth in command, the, bo- the not the bottom, but the entry of the— He'll be the baby officer. Uh, the it's, elected it's the officers. Bottom. Yes, the bottom. Uh, Tall Cedars Midwinter Conference is coming up uh, January 10th. So if you're into Tall Cedars, there you go. Uh, Larry Ping and F- oh, gotcha. <laughs> All right, that's a that's a joke on the board. Sorry. Uh, also, a uh, big shout out to Brother Nicholas Lane, who's been on several episodes. Uh, when he was here in the summer, he gave me a jar of pickles at his lodge, oh, Burlington Lodge man. number uh, one two three. I, Nick, I, I'm sorry, I forget your lodge's <laughs> number. Uh, that I was supposed to share with my Blue Lodge. However, mm. my Blue Lodge meeting uh, is with about 50, 60 people. So we decided to crack those open uh, today. And they were they were wonderful. So we ate the pickles. We just wanted to tell you, Nick, we love your pickle. We do. It was love good. It was amazing. And I think the last... Oh, no, we have... Um, uh, our quarterly so if you're in Pennsylvania or even if you're a neighboring state and you want to come over December 8th uh, and that's just in a week and then in the evening we have Pete Santa Stumble which has raised uh, over $60,000 for mounted police and canine over 100000 100000 yeah we raised uh, well change your event Brett because it says 60000 well we act, technically we did raise 60000 plus so there we go yeah there so you go. hundreds more than sixty. and our good friend and brother Jim Stevens uh, he's not been a guest on the show but he's a big supporter uh, he wrote a new book that was just recently published, and I have the first printed copy in my hand, uh, and it's called Lodge Business. Now, Jim is a is a uh, the consummate businessman, so it's got a long title, but the title is Lodge Business: The Theoretical Application of Entrepreneurial Business Practices to Blue Lodge. Uh, but Jim manages a multi multi million dollar company and is highly successful. And and, and, and I, I just started this because uh, the book is just brand new, and I just got my copy. And I, I've started going through it uh, page by page. And, and this book is, is different than some other books that might be out um, in that it doesn't just talk about what the principles are. It drills down very specifically on how to apply these business principles to the lodge and in your lodge. And the, the thing that comes out as being the, the glaring <coughs> archangels singing in the, in the clouds is you have to have a plan beyond the next worshipful master, right? It has to be, it has to be a plan that at least the next three officers in line can get behind and implement and get rolling. Because if you're not doing that, and th- this goes back to in the old days when the lodge was run by a 25-year secretary, the lodge was what the lodge was, which was what the secretary said it was. And that is not the world we are in anymore. And the masters have to have a plan. Yeah, and even uh, the right worshipful grandmaster talked about that on his episode. And I'm sure we'll have Jim on the show. Jim yes. will be on the show on January 30th. Oh, perfect. And lastly, well, I think... Well, lastly, I want to thank our... Uh, our, our, mas- our so with Patreon, we have, um, our, we have our... We're calling them um, Entered Apprentice Producers, Fellow Craft Producers, our Master Mason Producers. So uh, at the Master Mason producer level, we'd like to thank Brother Dan Madrigal. And at the... Really? Yeah. Oh, boy, Dan. We love you. 
And um, and on the the fellow craft level of contribu- contributors, uh, brother Jason Brewster out of Long Island. Outstanding, gentlemen. Wonderful. Thank you. And I think we both of you guys did donate once. Oh, Dan's past before. guests on the show too. Yeah. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Wonderful. One last thing, talking about local stuff. Uh, this is uh, very hyper local, but talking about the Pennsylvania uh, quarterly coming up December eighth. Uh, what's that? You didn't hit Kipling, did you? Uh, I figured I'll Larry, yeah, I'll I was waiting, for, I was waiting for Larry. Uh, if you are in District 1 and you are an officer, if you wear a tuxedo and tails for your normal attendance, it is requested that we wear our tux and tails in full regalia as the host district. So if there's any District 1 guys listening to this, there's going to be email communication coming out this week, but uh figure we just take advantage of the airwaves. So wear your regalia to the quarterly if you are a District 1 Pennsylvania officer. What about past masters? Where are you, Jewel? I got my jewels. All right, Pete, what do you got going on? Uh, installation, uh, Santa Stumble, just all kinds of stuff. I'm I'm going crazy right now. I've got a lot, <laughs> I, I got a lot of stuff, and you know, every once in a while, one of my profane friends will reach out to me, and I'm I'm busy. I'm busy, and I think I just need to put a general post out there that. If you want to do anything with me in 2019, it's probably not going to happen unless you happen to be a member of one of the things I'm a member of, and then you'll see me. So that's oh, it. One other thing. Sorry. Speaking of insulation, if you're bored and you're from Pennsylvania, uh, we have insulation for lodge number 43, which selfishly uh, I'm plugging because on December 12th, I'll be installed as junior warden. Dun, dun, dun. There you go. <laughs> Larry. What, what do you got going on? What I got going on? Installation, which I will be at. Turkey dinner, too, by the way. Nice. That's for Lamberton. And, uh, well, no, this is Tall Cedars. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I will be at Lamberton's uh, installation of uh, Brother Larry Hudson. I will be making the nominations. Brother Larry Hudson um, was a co-worker of ours at Verizon. Absolutely. And I was his first line signer. So I finally feel like after being a Mason for 20 years, 21 years, Finally off the hook. They always say, you need to find a brother to replace you. Well, if you're a worshipful master of the lodge, it doesn't matter that I've got 60, 70 men that I've got in the Masons. He'll be the first Mason that I've got to replace me as worshipful master. There you go. So my job is done. Step it up, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I will also be attending the convocation in downtown Lancaster. Wonderful. Which is the, what the we call the quarterly. I right. call it the convocation. You know, it's like when the Pope comes in. You're not and a all past the They're not going to let you in. <laughs> They'll let me in. Die su domine. <laughs> That's all I have. Kipling. Kipling, Kipling. Oh, yeah, we're going to close the show with that. Oh, we're closing the show. We're closing the show. We're closing the show. We're closing the show. Hi, welcome to episode we're, number 65. We're closing the show, Larry. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Hey, everybody. So on um, in April. No, Save I was going to do this. Well, get her done. <laughs> Jeez, a week. Come on, Larry the Cable Guy. I haven't said much all day long. Oh, now we know why. God. All right. All right. Keith, anyway. go light your cigarette. We'll be up right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in closing the show, I'm not going to do my usual shtick. No, yeah, just talk about Kipling. And yeah, then we'll... April 27th, Saturday. That's, come on. It, yeah. Richard, all right, Roger all right, here we go. This will be our first annual Masonic Light Podcast Gala, and we're honoring the great author, Rudyard Kipling. And it'll be the Kipling Dinner, but it will be the Masonic Light Gala. And this is going to be on April the 27th, a Saturday evening at Media Heights Golf Club. And it's a spectacular place, great everything there. Uh, and uh, it's going to be our first ever. At first of, uh, we hope, will be an annual event. We're going to have entertainment. We're actually going to, part of the entertainment is we're going to do a live show from there. Along with any We're going to record a live show. Yeah, record record live. a live show. Right. We're not going to stream it. No, no, we can't do that. Uh, also, too, I think we made the idea that it will be a black tie. We're going to make this thing really special. Uh, so people black enjoy Black tie it. or dark suit? Be a black tie or dark suit. That's what we're gonna say. But so you got to wear pants, Jack. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> and we're looking forward to that. So put it on your calendar, folks. April twenty seventh, twenty nineteen. 
uh, Saturday evening, and uh, we'll get more out in a little bit. But uh, put it on your calendar now. It's going to be a great event. You're going to. It's going to be an extremely enjoyable evening, and I guarantee you the York uh, Tall Cedars Ball we went to. This is going to be close to that. Pete, so that's all want, I have. Do you want to say anything about Santa Stumble? Um, if you guys want to come out or make a donation, www.lancastersantastumble.com. Um, money goes to the uh, mounted police, the, the horses, and to the dogs of the canine unit. The way they set those things up in uh, in Lancaster City is that they are not in the budget of the police department, so so a future chief just can't like, oh, this is too much money, and just cross it off. So it's all by donations. Um, it's all well and good until you need a new truck or you have a horse that gets sick. Because guess what? If a horse gets sick, it's like ten, fifteen thousand dollars. So um, you know, help throw some money. It's not Masonic, but the good news is we're gonna have about four thousand drunk Santas downtown Lancaster <laughs> at the same time as the Grand Master is downtown Lancaster, and we're gonna really annoy a lot of Masons, which is fun, you know. <laughs> we're just gonna put our dues cards in an envelope. And... <laughs> Jay Laser, what do you have going on Masonically? Masonically. They're coming up. Oh, goodness. Well, uh, let's see. We're going to do the 15th. That's a biggie. Yep. A lodge on the 11th, which is conflicting. A lot of people are conflicting with our lodge meeting. I don't know why they didn't look ahead, but anyhow, so those are a couple of You mean 110 years up. ago when we scheduled our meetings yeah, for the second Tuesday right. of every they, month? They yeah. should have figured that out. Man. <laughs> Jack? Um, well, we have installation of officers at Ephrata Lodge on the 11th. I get installed as monarch of Ubar Grotto on the 15th. Um, I am planning to attend both the quarterly communication of the Grand Lodge and the Santa Stumble. In your fez? Um, I will have my fez and I will be wearing my um, tacky polyester red blazer. Cool. Um, and my uh, Santa Stumble scarf, so I'm in. Oh, Jack, I know that you had bowed out of the, uh, the District 1 degree competition team. Uh, due to your schedule, but uh, uh, no, due to my back. Due to your back, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but they are going to uh, recognize uh, participants, even though we came in second place. But they're going to recognize participants as well. Yeah. So if you're on the team, make sure you come. Uh, Keith, you got anything going on? Masonically? <laughs> Keith, Keith, Keith says, says that rocking Keith out says, is it? Keith says no. All right, Larry, cue the chickens. I don't have any chickens for today. No, no come on. No, we ate the chicken. It was it was no, Thanksgiving. We, 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 we don't have any chickens. The chicken with the pickles. Hey, everybody. Because we're going to short you this, this episode. Not Good night. my idea to have a show today. Thank you. Know. All right. And this is Jason Lewis. You want to hear Jack the chickens? Jack Harley. You want to hear the chickens? Uh, that's Larry. 10 that's Larry. in the morning, hey, I get a note Larry's from having a stroke. Hang on. Okay. News, 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 this morning. Morning. news flash. I'm the one who cues the chickens. I, I will hear them if I want to. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> that was Larry Maris. Pete bye left bye the room. Jay Laser. I really have to pee, damn it. <laughs> bye, everybody. Oh, my God. You've been listening to the Masonic Light Podcast with brothers Pete Ruggieri. Larry Maris, Jason Lewis, Jack Harley, and me, your dulcet toned announcer, Brian Hill. Listen to all our episodes on our website, www.masoniclight.com, or via your favorite podcasting service.